Network. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Jay Cohn. And I'm Janelle Slade. Federal authorities today tight-lipped after a BIA officer shot and killed a lodgegrass man less than 24 hours ago. Lodgegrass Mayor Quincy Dabney tells Q2 the man was shot five or six times by the officer just outside of a lodge grass home. And Dabney tells Q2 it all started around 7 p.m. Sunday when a woman called authorities to remove her grandson from the premises because he was intoxicated. He says as the BIA officer arrived at the home, the man holding a hunting knife then started to walk outside and as the lodge grass man stepped out onto the porch, he was shot by the officer. Dabney told us, quote, there is no way this should have happened, end quote. The names of the officer and the men killed have not yet been released. The mayor says the man shot is either 36 or 37 years old. Lodgegrass residents were called to an emergency meeting late Sunday night at uh, Lodgegrass City Hall. Now the mayor says the community is still coping with an unsolved triple homicide from last August. The goal to transform the Billings downtown area now features a partnership between the city and a development group. But the next 12 months will be crucial in determining how this proposal will take shape and what it will entail. Q2's Dustin Kleeman in studio tonight with more on One Big Sky Project. Dustin. Good evening, Jay and Janelle. We've received a number of questions as to what One Big Sky Project will actually look like. And the answer to that, well, whatever the planning process comes up with. This is what you've likely seen, a map of downtown and the medical corridor. The money raised by the Billings leaders in the city for this part of the planning process, $675,000 in total, means it will stay in the local economy. But what exactly does that multicolored map mean in reality? New development and redevelopment of, of some of the great architecture and buildings that exist in the city today. So that, that's a nice blend to have. Some cities don't have the the architectural character that Billings has. So then you, then you want to know and you ask the question, well, wh what is it? What, what could be built here? Certainly residential. We believe there's a, there's a great opportunity to bring an urban residential to the core of Billings. We believe tourism is, has a tremendous upside here in Billings. You already draw from a broad geographic region. There's so much more that can be done with that. But we shouldn't talk about it as a convention center in the context of how we've thought about convention centers for the last 50 years, we should think about what a convention center can be tomorrow, both a community asset and an asset that can draw in tourism from outside the region. We'll have more at 10 from my conversation with Mr. Dunn. He says it's not out of the question that the first shovel could dig in by next summer. We'll see. Guys? All right, thanks, Dustin. Well, the latest fundraising numbers are in for Mon Montana's crowded U.S. House race. And it's incumbent uh, Republican Greg Gianforte, definitely the leader of the pack. Tonight, MTN's Mike Dennison breaks down the numbers for us. Republican Greg Gianforte has been Montana's congressman for less than a year and is running for his second term in 2018. Six Democrats are vying for the nomination to challenge Gianforte this year. But if last week's campaign fundraising report is any indication, Gianforte is definitely not sitting on his hands when it comes to getting ready to do battle with whoever his opponent may be. The high-tech entrepreneur from Bozeman raised about $720,000 during the first three months of this year. That's more than all six of his potential Democratic challengers combined. Since winning his seat in a special election last May, he's raised about $1.3 million in total campaign funds and ended March with $950,000 in his campaign account. The top fundraiser among the Democrats so far has been former Missoula Land Trust Director Grant Keir. He's taken in about $654,000 through the end of March, almost all of it from individual contributors other than himself. The campaign of Billings attorney John Heenan has had more net income, about $717,000, but $235,000 of that amount has come from Heenan's own pocket. Former State Representative Kathleen Williams of Bozeman reports raising about $218,000 since she entered the campaign last fall, including $145,000 in the past three months. The other Democratic U.S. House candidates, former State Senator Linda Moss of Billings and Bozeman attorneys Jared Petinato and John Meyer, are each under $100,000 in net fundraising so far. Just four weeks remain until absentee ballots go out in the mail. And primary election day is less than two months away on June 5th. Reporting from Helena, Mike Dennison, MTN News. Thanks, Mike. And by the way, Gianforte faces no opposition in the Republican primary. 
Montana state health officials urging consumers to throw out their romaine lettuce after an E. coli outbreak reaches Montana. The bacterial infection has been identified in four Montana counties, including Missoula, Flathead, Lincoln and Ravalli. Authorities trace the E. coli back to Yuma, Arizona. The Centers for Disease Control reports three people have been hospitalized in Montana and an additional 35 cases, including 22 hospitalizations in 10 other states. E. coli symptoms can include severe stomach cramps, diarrhea and nausea. Now, health officials warn if you have romaine lettuce in your refrigerator, throw it out, even if no one has become sick. The CBS drama NCIS not only is the number one watched series on television, it's also the highest rated drama in the world. As it wraps up its 15th year, turns out only Gunsmoke and Lassie have had a longer tenure on CBS. QT Scott Breen has a friend who writes for the hit show and recently got to spend some time on set to take us behind the scenes. Hey, what a great time. Now, some of you may remember Brendan Feely, who used to report with us right here in Billings, a job that he says was sort of his plan C. This was actually my very first love. Uh, I attempted to do this right out of college and uh, failed spectacularly. So, Feely earned his television start 17 years ago in Billings as a news reporter, much to the surprise of Wilmer Valderrama, who plays Agent Torres. A news reporter, okay. Oh man, that makes so much sense. I didn't know that, but now that I do. Now that he does, Torres, shooting on location, calls Feely over for a little interrogation. I have a question. Can we hug? <laughs> <laughs> you know, What's your yeah, question? question? Yeah. You were a news reporter? You didn't know? No! <laughs> then Valderrama wants a little show and tell. I just want to take a couple of minutes of your time. Do you know your name? Did you see what happened over I there? I did. I really did. No. Do, you, do you have any idea what happened? <sighs> He's the nicest guy. What was your question? <laughs> Almost two decades after reporting, Feely is in his third year of writing for NCIS. He's responsible for creating three shows a season, each idea hatched on this whiteboard in his office. Uh, and this is the very first scene in the episode. This is the scene that goes before the main titles. I am teaming the interior of a patrol car that's speeding down the highway. This episode title, a fantastic play on words, sight unseen. The title came out of many failed titles, so I won't go through the bad ones. This was an idea about a blind woman who witnesses a crime. You see Feely's office on the lot decorated with mementos, including this picture signed by the cast. Lead actor Mark Harmon had it framed for Feely after his first script hit the air, a sign of collaboration between writer and characters. I love when actors come up and give me a line that I wish that I had written, where I'm like, I spent a week trying to figure out what you say, and you just in five seconds knew. I love his scripts, you know, he, he gravitates towards doing, you know, crimes that also have some kind of emotional attachment to it. You want to be able to root for somebody? Uh, there's some really funny Torres moments that he's definitely developed that's helped shape, you know, the layers of, of my character, so I'm, I'm grateful for that. Marilee Talkington plays the blind woman in this episode. She was very open to dialogue. Because there was a few little tweaks here and there that I, you know, I think she would actually say this. It's more like this. Hey, you might recognize this MTAC here on the iconic set of NCIS. You know, this is the 350th episode coming up. That's 15 years. 15 years of iconic characters, if you will, walking up and down these stairs. I feel like I'm kind of cheating. You know, I just got here two years ago and uh, I'm already celebrating the 350. You know, so it's very funny that I get to say that and not everyone else that's not here. Michael Weatherly, sorry not sorry. I took your 350 celebration, kid. Weatherly, of course, played the prominent role of Agent Anthony Dinozo for 13 years before leaving a couple years ago for his own CBS series, Bull. Of course, the main character here is Agent Jethro Gibbs, played by Harmon. Feely says some of his best writing advice, even today, came from the actor. A great script, you'd be able to take the names above each piece of dialogue out, erase it, and simply have the dialogue. And then a person that doesn't know who's speaking, who's familiar with our show, would be able to go back, look at the script, and say, that's a Gibbs line, that's a Ducky line. 
Tomorrow at 5.30 on Q2, a sneak peek at tomorrow night's episode. Plus, Brendan and Mary Lee show us the challenges behind the scenes of accommodating the visually impaired actress. All right, thank you very much, Scott. Can hardly wait for his piece tomorrow night. By the way, Brendan's episode of NCIS airs tomorrow night at 7 o'clock right here on Q2. And Scott says there's a surprise in this show, tailored specifically <laughs> for our viewers here in the Billings area, and it's pretty easy to spot on multiple occasions. You've uh, piqued my interest. That'll be fun. Still ahead on tonight's 530 News, 26 years ago, a gesture of generosity and friendship between the two superpowers. It involved both Montana and Wyoming residents. We'll look back in our Q2 Rewind. And in sports tonight, we hear from Mick Durham, officially introduced today as MSUB's new men's basketball coach. And coming up in weather, we got a fresh supply of some moisture moving in. We'll tell you what it means for you coming up in a few more minutes. You're watching MTN News with Jay Cohn and Janelle Slade. Storm Tracker weather with Bob McGuire and sports with Scott Green. This is the 530 News on Q2, Montana's news leader.